Hi everyone, we are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at YOLO. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you last attended which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then, choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session, and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app. I am eagerly looking forward to all your submissions right after this class. Hey there kids, how are you doing? Welcome to today's class and welcome back to the sketching course that we've been going ahead and doing. Now I am super excited to have you guys back in today's class and I'm super excited to go ahead and do another shading piece as part of all of these amazing shading pieces that we've been going ahead and doing. Now before we actually go ahead and start off with what we're going to go ahead and do today, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of things you know before we get started. The first thing that I want to go ahead Ahead and talk to you about is the certificate program that we have going on. Like you all know, you're already getting certificates for all of the classes that you're already attending, but you need to keep a couple of things in mind. The first thing that you need to go ahead and keep in mind is that you have to go ahead and attend all of the classes of any particular course. So what I mean by that is if you're going ahead and attending the sketching class, or if you're going ahead and doing a landscape drawing class, or if you're going ahead and doing a general knowledge class, make sure you're going ahead and attending all of the classes of that particular course, whether it's a four class course, eight class course, 10 class course, whatever it is, make sure you go ahead and attend all of the classes. So as to, you know, go ahead and, you know, give the proof for identification that you're actually learning the skills that we want to go ahead and teach you. Now, apart from that, the second thing that you have to go ahead and do is always go ahead and make all of your submissions for the course. Now, the reason I'm asking you to do this, or the reason any of your teachers are going ahead and asking you to do this is mainly because if you go ahead and attend all of the classes and make your submission, then you're going ahead and learning it in the format that we want to go ahead and teach you. And if you're learning it in that format of how we want to go ahead and teach you, then you will be able to learn that skill or you will be able to, you know, know that skill perfectly the way we want to go ahead and teach you, automatically giving us enough reason to go ahead and give you that certificate. So just make sure of those two points. Now, apart from that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the submissions. I've been going ahead and talking about this in all of my classes because I feel it is very, very, very important for me to go ahead and talk to you about the same. So what I want to go ahead and tell you is that some days you might have good days, some days you might have bad days, some days maybe you're doing very well, some days you're not doing that great. Now, irrespective of how you've gone ahead and done on that particular day, I want you to go ahead and do your submission. Now, the reason I'm going ahead and asking you to do this is because 
as a teacher i'm going ahead and looking at the progress you're making at a, as, as in a particular course so imagine on the first day you've not done that well but on the second day you've done better on the third day you've done better on the fourth day you've done better and i'm looking at you grow and i'm looking at you progress i'm looking at you change then i know that you're actually learning the skill that i'm going ahead and teaching you and let's say all of your classes you're doing great because you know you're um, you know capturing that skill really really well and maybe one class you've not done that well that's completely all that right. i will totally understand and i'll be able to pinpoint out knowing that okay maybe this was not your day and you didn't do such a good job but apart from that you're actually learning so you know always having that concept of making all of your submissions whether it's your school homeworks or you're you know, going ahead and doing the submissions that you're doing here makes a large difference one for the teacher and one for yourself because you also have that mental responsibility that you want to put in your best in order to go ahead and do your submission so make sure of that now let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to go ahead and do in today's class now today's class is going to be another sketching class wherein we are working on still life now this is going to be the last class wherein we actually go ahead and work with a single piece of still life in the next class which is going to be a final class we'll actually go ahead and work with a bunch of still life pieces sitting together but today is that class wherein we go ahead and do a single object for the last time so the object that we're going to be going ahead and doing is basically going to be a teapot now you know we've gone ahead and done a bowl a teacup and all of those small small things but a teapot again is something that i really wanted to go ahead and do because it's such a beautiful element or an object to go ahead and shade but this time i've kept it a little bit different from what we've been going ahead and doing in our previous classes now in our previous classes what we've been doing is is i've been going ahead and doing a mini sketch on top and then identifying where the light is going to be coming from telling you where the light is coming from and then marking it out now in today's class what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm not going to tell you where the light is coming from i'm just going to go ahead and directly mark the light medium dark out and we're going to automatically go ahead and shade the light medium dark out so till the end of the class i'm not going to actually disclose where the light is coming from this is a skill that i've gone ahead and taught you so i want you to identify by you know where the light is coming from and keep it in your mind till the end of the class till i reveal it and you know come to know whether you have actually learned the skill that i'm teaching you whether you are actually able to guess what i am you know teaching you whether you've understood the concept or not so i'm not going to tell you you're going to guess it by yourself or actually you're going to use your knowledge and skill that i have imparted in you and figure out where um, the light medium the light is actually coming from the light source is coming from and in the end i'm going to reveal it and you can check whether you're right or wrong so let's go ahead and get started with the list of materials that you need for today's class The first thing that you need for today's class is going to be a sheet of paper like you know we've been going ahead and taking in a sketchbook drawing book whatever book that you have with you here i have like a nice sketchbook journal book um you know going ahead and drawing if you have an a4 size sheet of paper if you have a loose drawing sheet of paper if you have any other kind of sheet of paper that you have you can go ahead and use that that will absolutely work The next thing that you will need for today's class is going to be a pencil. So have a nice sharp pencil with you. I do not want pencil that is, you know, blunt or light. So have a nice pencil that's nice and dark so that you know when you're shading and you're going ahead and doing your work, it looks very very neat, it looks very very nice. The whole picture looks beautiful. Now what we're going to go ahead and do first as part of our drawing is we're going to go ahead and draw that mini um you know, um drawing that we always do on top of the tea uh the pot that we are going to go ahead and do so we're going to first go ahead and do the mini drawing and then we're going to go ahead and mark out the light medium dark now in today's class like similar to what we did in the previous class there are some small 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 elements of the drawing itself that are really really hard to kind of break out and you know do your light medium darks with so i'm going to basically go ahead and mark out only the center portion of it and automatically you know identify and tell you where all the light medium darks will be in everywhere else so you know you'll get an idea but we won't necessarily mark it out because it'll look too messed up then and we won't be able to understand it later so just one big portion we'll do it and the rest of it we'll go ahead and leave out and we'll leave it up to our imagination to remember that bit and actually shade it out So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to draw the teapot. Now here, if you want to go ahead and draw alongside me the teapot, that is, you can definitely go ahead and do so. But if you feel like you want to just go ahead and look and understand, and then later just do the direct big teapot with me, you can go ahead and do the same. I'm completely okay with either of the two. 
So let's get started. Now taking the same pencil, I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing. So what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and doing a curve like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line at the bottom. Now this is going to be a teacup, which is going to be really, really simple. It's just going to be a teacup that is, you know, the ones that you kind of keep on the gas. Now you have two kinds of teapots or tea. Uh, I've been calling it teacup, but I mean teapot. Um, so you have two kinds of teapots, one in which you, you know, you store your tea and the second in which you cook so i'm going to be going ahead and drawing the one in which you actually heat your water or cook your tea in you know because it's going to be something different to work with so first i've gone ahead and done a semicircle, and then i've drawn a straight line over there the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and draw a curved line right at the top. Now, this is going to be sort of that lid of um, the teapot that can be opened and closed. Now, after that, I'm going to go ahead and draw the pouring bit of the teapot. Now, always every teapot will sort of have something that you can pour your liquid out of. So this is sort of like a funnelish, you know, tunnel part of it that, you know, you can pour your tea uh, out of. Now, this, if you feel like you're having a difficult time doing sort of like a curve, like how I have gone ahead and done it, you can just do two simple straight lines as well. That will absolutely work. There's no need or like hard and fast rule that you have to work with, you know, um, like doing the curve that I've gone ahead and done. Now, in order to make this, um, you know, just simple sort of like a diagram that I'm doing, I'm just going ahead and drawing the handle and I'm doing the circle bit, a little bit of a few detailings here and there I will incorporate when I'm drawing the bigger piece itself, because this is a rough drawing, like I always tell you, it's just sort of to give you an idea. So the next step is going to be to draw um, the candle on top. So I'm just drawing two lines on either side coming on top to sort of give that um, either a metal piece or sort of like a rope piece, whatever, you know, this um, a teapot will have sort of that coming on top like so. And then I'm just going to go ahead and draw a bar on top, sort of like the handle of the teapot itself. So you can see I'm just going ahead and drawing sort of that bar and joining those two lines together in. Now, finally, just to complete this simple sketch, I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle on top. Now, that part we will go ahead and detail out a little bit more when we do our um, actual drawing. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do again, like I said, I'm not going to reveal where the light is going to be coming from. I'm just going to start marking my spots of light, medium, dark. So this is going to be um, your cue to figure out where the light medium dark is actually and where it's coming from so if you figure it out great if you don't it's okay don't worry about it i will tell you right at the end so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and start marking it out now what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be marking out two thin lines on either side. So you can see I'm leaving that center portion really, really big and I'm marking out light there. And on either side, I'm going ahead and leaving out two thin lines and I'm marking medium, medium on the first section and then I'm marking out dark, dark on the next section. So that is going to be my marking of the light, medium, dark. So again, to explain, the center strip is going to be light. A thin strip right next to the light is going to be medium. The thin strip right next to that is going to be dark. Now, this should be your cue. And I think all of you should have by now figured out where your um, light is coming from. But if you haven't, it's OK. You will figure it out soon enough. Now, this same thing that I've gone ahead and done, I'm going to be actually going ahead and following for the rest of my whole piece. Now, what I mean by that is the marking of the light medium dark let's take the top portion of the uh, teapot itself which is the lid i'm going to do the same thing the center part is going to be the light portion a line next to that is going to be my medium a line next to that is going to be my dark same thing for the handle on top same thing for the funnel bit on the side every single thing is going to have dark on the edges medium in the little bit in the center and then light right at the center so that's going to be my mind map if you want to mark that bit out go ahead and mark it out no hard and fast rule that you can't or you can whatever you like like completely up to you. So I'm just going to wait here for a second, making sure all of you have gone ahead and finished this up if you are drawing it. If you haven't been drawing it, that's okay. Go ahead and have a look at it. Make sure you're understanding what we're going to go ahead and do because we're actually going to go ahead and sketch it out now. And like most of you know, I never mark out the shadows at this point of time. I always do the shadow later on. So I'm going to go ahead and do the shadow later on itself. There's no marking of the shadow right here. Excellent job, everybody. Very, very well done. 
very happy with uh, whoever has gone ahead and drawn it others i'm seeing you you know sort of analyzing and figuring out what we have gone ahead and done so very very good job excellent so i can see most of you are ready to go in terms of actually doing the teapot itself so let's get started now here i'm going to go ahead and do the same process that i did earlier i'm just going to go ahead and start with a center line right at the base now having a line at the bottom just makes it easier to go ahead and do the curve on top because i know where the starting and ending point is and then i'm going ahead and doing this curve right here now here you can go ahead and use short dashes to go ahead and do this because obviously it is much bigger than that mini version that we have drawn so you might need a little bit of you know small small dashes to make it look better which is completely all right go ahead and do so if you need to so this is the first step waiting for all of you to go ahead and complete and then we can move on to the next step excellent job everybody good 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 job very very well done perfect perfect Excellent. So everybody's gone ahead and done a wonderful job. Now we can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is actually drawing the curve on top. So here you can see I'm doing that curve a bit right there. So that's going to be step number two. Make sure your curve over there is done well and you have not gone ahead and done sort of like a shabby curve. Make sure it looks neat and you have done a good job with it. Very well done, everybody. Good job. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and do sort of like a rectangle on top and then add the circle. Now, this is going to be the lid portion of my teapot itself. So you can see it's sort of like um, the ball with which you can just lift off the top part and probably pour in water or whatever, the tea, milk, whatever you want to go ahead and pour in. So that's sort of like a handle. In the small drawing, I didn't draw that piece of rectangle, but here I've gone ahead and added that in. Well done, everybody. Good, good, good job. Excellent. Now we can go ahead and move on to drawing the funnel bit of it. Now here, like you can see, I'm going ahead and doing a curve. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the second curve in order to make it complete and add in sort of like an oval on top. Now this portion, like I mentioned when we were drawing uh, the mini drawing as well, you can go ahead and do two straight lines itself coming out and draw a you know oval right on top. If you feel like it's going to be hard for you to go ahead and do um, the curve, it's completely all all right to go ahead and make a few changes here and there in your drawing there's no hard and fast rule that you have to exactly follow what i am doing so go ahead and make that change if you need to well done everybody good 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 job excellent Perfect. So since everybody's gone ahead and done this, we can now move on to the last part of our drawing, which is going to be to draw the handle itself. So first I'm going ahead and doing the two standing lines, um, like I did with the mini pot, going ahead and doing two curves of sorts. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw the handle. Now here in this part, if you feel like you need a scale to get that portion light, right, you can go ahead and do so. Um, but I would suggest not to go ahead and use a scale as much as possible. You're going to have better practice when you're not using a scale like I always tell you so make sure to not use the scale you know if you feel like you can't then you can but make sure as much as possible you don't want to use a scale excellent job everybody very 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 well done so happy with everybody's work great excellent excellent job Perfect. So since everybody's gone ahead and done a good job, we can move on to the next part of our drawing. So now what we're going ahead and doing is we're going to actually start the shading portion of it. Now, like I always tell you when it comes to the shading part, make sure you're doing it neatly, nicely, precisely. Don't do it like in a very fast manner. Keep it neat. And we always go ahead and start off with the dark tone. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do, starting off with the dark tone tone on whichever side you like I'm going to be going ahead and starting on my right hand side taking my pencil and going ahead and doing a thin strip of dark so remember we are not doing thick thick strips over here only a light is going to be a thick strip so a really really thin strip of my dark tone like I'm doing right here take your time with this if you need to there's no hurry in doing this do it peacefully and neatly perfect so as you can see, I've done it really, really neatly. And you can see how thin my strip is. It's really, really thin. It is not thick at all. And that's exactly how I want it to look. I want there to be a really thin strip of a dark over there. Excellent job, everybody. Good job, everyone. Very happy with your work. 
Very, very well done. Perfect. Perfect. Great, excellent job everybody. Now we can move on to the medium tone. And now here medium tone, like you all know, always blend it out with your dark and make sure again that you're doing a thin strip and you're not doing a very, very thick strip. Make sure that the two colors, that is your dark tone and your medium tone is nicely blended and try not to have any gaps here and there. So keep it as neat as you can. Again, I'm keeping it a very, very thin strip. I'm not doing a very, very thick strip. And you know, that will give me a good portion, uh, right? at the center to do my light tone and give sort of that light effect which I want so make sure to go ahead and leave that space so now on my right hand side I've gone ahead um, sorry my left hand side I've gone ahead and finished up my uh, dark and medium and now I'm going to move on to my right hand side and do the same exact thing go ahead and do my dark and medium so just waiting to make sure everybody's done yep Yes, everybody's pretty much done. Great, great. Okay, great. So since pretty much everybody's done, we can move on to actually doing uh, this next side of it. If you're still doing the previous side, no worries, no issues. Go ahead and take your time and do it. Um, you know, you can always catch up with me. It's really simple to do. So here you can see I'm going ahead and moving on to doing my dark tone. Again, making sure I'm doing a thin strip, making sure my line is neat, making sure, you know, I'm going ahead and not leaving too many gaps here and there in between my shading. Always make sure of these few pointers whenever you're shading. Very good job, everybody. Excellent, excellent work. Very happy with that, what everybody is doing right now. Very well done. Okay, excellent. So everybody's gone ahead and finished with their dark tone. Now we can move on to doing our medium tone. So going ahead and taking my medium tone and adding in again a thin strip of medium tone right there. Now in most of our classes, you would have already noticed by now, we always start with dark medium and then we do our light. Um, whenever you go ahead and do shading later on in the future as well, keep this in mind. Don't directly jump to dark, uh, to light, medium and dark. It's always going to be be easier to section out your portions do dark medium and then do light it's going to always be easier so keep that in mind very good job everybody everybody is doing such a wonderful job very happy with your work well done Great, now let's move on to the light portion of our whole picture. So here you can see I'm starting with my left hand side and moving towards the center. Now here you can go ahead and move from whatever side to whichever side as long as you're comfortable doing it and make sure you try blending it out. If you feel like you're not able to blend it out, then you can go ahead and change sides and go ahead and blend it out. That's exactly what I do every single time, right? I go ahead and you know turn my hand around and go ahead and do it from the other angle. So I've done my light from the bottom but to blend it out and you can see I'm going ahead and using my side technique to go ahead and blend it out so I've always told you you can do so now again make sure of one thing like I've always told you in all of our previous classes um, whenever there are two sections to any um, uh, teapot or a vase or anything you want to go ahead and create that section and the way you go ahead and create that section is actually by adding dark tone so if you look at um, this teapot right now we have two sections to it which is going to be the top part which is the lid portion of it and then you have the actual body of the teapot so in order to create that division between the top part of it and the down part of it you can see I went ahead and did the whole line over there as the dark tone and blended it out to my light tone now the reason I went ahead and did that again was to create that bifurcation otherwise the whole thing would just look one and that line would you know sort of disappear and it would not be there and now same thing for the bottom as well we even did this for our vase now even though the vase uh, below the vase or below the teapot there's no other added section to it we still have the ground which is a new fresh section or we still have the shadow bit of it now in order to go ahead and again create that differentiation having a dark tone right at the base create that you know break that this is it this is part of the body of our teapot and the rest of it is going to be our ground so that's how we're going ahead and dividing it out so make sure to go ahead and do this I can see most of you have gone ahead and finished this so very very well done everybody very happy with your work excellent perfect great perfect everybody 
All right, perfect. So now what we can go ahead and do is we can move on to the next portion of it. Now, like I mentioned, everywhere it's going to be the same. We're going to do a strip of dark, we're going to do a strip of medium, and then we're going to go ahead and repeat it on the other side and then do the whole middle section light. So let's move on to going ahead and doing the same exact thing for the top part of our teapot. So here I'm going ahead and starting with our dark tone right there. So you can see I'm taking my time to do it. Now here my strip of dark tone is very, very thin. I'm not doing a strip of very dark tone. Um, you can see I went ahead and did a thin strip and now I jump to doing my medium tone. Now again, I'm going ahead and doing my dark tone and then I'm going to jump and move on to doing a thin strip of my medium tone. Now this I'm just going ahead and doing it like automatically without waiting so that you know, you all know how to do this already. So just you have to just go ahead and do it. Now I'm just going to wait here, making sure all if you are done go ahead and finish it up now again uh, we want to create sort of like a division between uh, the top and bottom like i said now here we already have a division between the top part of the semicircle between the body and the cap but we do not have a division between that small rectangle and the ball that we have with the a top part the lid of the teapot so what we're going to go ahead and do is that dome right there that empty spot that i have that's going to be dark so we'll finish up my light tone and then we'll do the dark portion on top so make sure firstly you've gone ahead and done a neat job with your dark and medium yes perfect and now we can go ahead and add in the light so you can see first i'm neatly adding in my light tone and then in the top portion over there i'm going to go ahead and add in my dark tone and I'm going to blend it out. Now, the reason I did that, like I mentioned, I'm going ahead and sort of creating that dome that divides the top portion and the bottom portion. So now you can see when I'm looking at the teapot itself, I have a top portion and I have a bottom portion, two different portions, which I definitely need. Perfect, everybody. Good, good, good job. Very happy with all of your work. Excellent work. Good job. Perfect. Now moving on to the next part of it, we're going to go ahead and actually do that sort of rectangle and that ball. Now for the rectangle, I'm just going to go ahead and do a simple dark tone. I'm not going to go ahead and do a shading for it. Now the reason I'm not bothering to do the shading for that bit is because it's too much to go ahead and do for such a small bit. So just go ahead and do a complete dark tone. But for um, the circle part of it, I'm actually going to go ahead and do a dark on the outside, then medium and then light. If you feel like you don't want to go ahead and do it then you can just shade it light as well it's not going to make much of a difference so let's go ahead and do that doing a complete dark tone over there as you can see always press your pencil down when you have just a complete dark tone it makes it look really neat and really nice so here you can see i've done dark then i'm going to go ahead and slightly do medium and then very lightly, I'm going to go ahead and do my light. So you can see that sort of um, highlight is sort of there right at the center of the ball and the outside part is nice and dark. Excellent, excellent job, everybody. Very, very well done with your work. Great. Perfect. Great. So now since everybody's gone ahead and finished up um, that rectangle as well as that ball, we can move on to the next portion of it. Now, like I mentioned, technique is always going to be the same. Now for this, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm starting with one edge doing dark. Then I'm going to go ahead and do it dark on the other side as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and have medium on either side. So you can see dark and dark done. Now going ahead and doing medium medium and smaller section it's easier to blend i think you all would have noticed this by now it's much easier to blend and then center section i'm going to go ahead and do light so you know now since you've already got the trick it's super easy actually to be honest there's actually not much that you have to go ahead and do and it's not complicated or it's not something that is really really hard or you know um, very nerve-wracking to do it's very simple to actually go ahead and do like you can see so I've just gone ahead and done the same thing just to explain again a dark and dark on either side then coming in the next step we want to do medium medium and the center portion we're going to go ahead and do completely light waiting for you all to go ahead and finish all of this and then we can move on to the next part of it very 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 good job everybody excellent work perfect really well done 
And one thing that I want you to keep in mind um, with the last few ones that we've been doing, the first one we did the teacup, the second one we went ahead and did the bowl, third one we went ahead and did the ways, you would have noticed that we didn't really have these many parts in our um, uh, subject or object. We had like just a few parts, but whenever it comes to actually shading a subject or an object, make sure you're always going ahead and doing it in these many sections. You don't want to go ahead and start doing dark everywhere and then medium everywhere and then light everywhere. Always make sure finish dark medium light of one portion then move on to the next portion and do dark medium light always shade it make that whole portion look realistic and then move on don't do full light full medium full dark because what happens is you have a good concept of like going ahead and making errors over there because you may get confused later on so just try to keep a watch of that when you're working perfect so now let's move on to going ahead and doing uh, the handles of the side. Now here, because, you know, if we go ahead and do um, dark medium light in this manner, then it'll be hard. So I'm going to be going ahead and doing it from top to bottom. The two top portions, uh, top and bottom portion is going to be dark, dark. Then the next two sections are going to be medium, medium. And then the center portion is going to be light. It would have been a little hard if you went from side to side. It would be really, really complicated to go ahead and do so. So hence, I didn't try to go ahead and do it from side side to side it just went ahead and from top was the dark and the bottom was the dark keeping the same sequence but you know working around it in order to make it easier for us also to shade so you also have to remember that light and medium dark you even though you can identify from a particular direction and make sure it's coming from a particular way sometimes it actually gets very hard to do it when you actually have to put it down on paper so make sure you make it easy enough for yourself to actually go ahead and shade it excellent job everybody very well done. Perfect. All right. Now we can move on to the last portion of it, which is going to be the top part. Now this we can obviously do side to side. We have enough space. So I'm going to be going ahead and doing dark on one side and dark on the other side. Then I'm going to go ahead and do medium and medium. And then I'm going to do the center portion light. Perfect. Excellent job. So now look at um, how our teapot is looking. It's already looking so realistic. It's looking so beautiful. It's looking so, so nice already. Now, once we just go ahead and add in that shadow, it's going to have such a beautiful look to it and it's going to have such a beautiful feel to it. And that's exactly what we have been going ahead and aiming for. So excellent job, everybody. Really, really happy with your work. Perfect. Great. So I can see all of you have gone ahead and finished this portion out. I'm very, very happy with all of your work. And now we can move on to doing the shadow portion of it. Now for this shadow portion of it, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm not going to go ahead and push it on any side. I'm just going to go ahead and draw sort of like an oval right around my teapot. So here you can see I'm just going ahead and drawing it around my teapot. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do a very, very simple light shading all around it. So here you can see I'm just like going ahead and doing a light shading around it here you can go ahead and stick to either a light tone or a medium tone you can go into darker tones but don't go too dark i would suggest going a little dark but not too much so here you can see i'm not going as dark as my teapot is not at all going that dark i'm just going ahead and sticking to more of my medium tones only one thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and, you know, add in a little bit more dark to the teapot itself, that bottom line. Now, like I have told you always, you want to create that separation between the ground and the object itself. So, you know, the shadow and the teapot were blending in together, which I did not want. I wanted them to look separate from each other. And that's exactly why I went and did that dark portion. So like you can see, I've gone ahead and added that dark portion and you can see that great division between the two and it's looking perfect. So look at how realistic this teapot is looking. Isn't it looking amazing? Perfect, isn't it? Perfect, guys. So, so, so happy with your work. Excellent job, everybody. You've done such an amazing, amazing job. Very, very, very well done. So glad with all of your work. Makes me so happy and proud to look at you guys progress so much. Well done. 
Perfect. So excellent job, everybody, as to what you've gone ahead and done. I can see some of you are still a little behind um, in terms of the shading portion of it. Whoever is behind, I'm just going to wait here for a couple of seconds. Make sure to go ahead and mark out the dark medium light because now you know the technique of shading. It's not complicated to actually go ahead and shade. It is only complicated to go ahead and identify. Now, the question of the art, which we went ahead and started off with, where is the light coming from? I think most of you have already guessed it. The light is coming straight at the teapot. Now, if some of you have not understood why light is coming straight at the teapot, let me explain it to you. Light, as you can see, is only in the center portions of every part of the teapot itself, whether it's the funnel or the pouring part of it, whether it's the body, whether it's the, um, you know, the opening lid part of it, or whether it's the whole handle portion of it. Light is always centered around the center portion of it. And then we have medium and dark. So let's say this is the object the light is coming right at on top of it straight hitting it and that's exactly also the reason why you don't have a shadow going on either direction you don't have a left shadow or a right shadow you have a shadow right at the bottom of it because when light comes to it you're going to have shadow only just around it on all sides so 360 degrees so that's exactly what we've gone ahead and done here excellent job whoever has gone ahead and guessed it you've gone ahead and understood everything that i've been teaching you in my last many classes and i'm so happy that you're able to understand and work with it. Excellent job, everybody. All right. So everybody, very, very well done. I'm so happy with all of your work. You've done such an amazing job today. Now, uh, before we end today's class, a couple of things that I want to go ahead and talk to you about. The first thing that I want to tell you about is obviously the certificate program. Do not go ahead and miss any classes. You want to go ahead and attend all of your classes. And second, you want to go ahead and make all of your submissions. It makes the world of a difference if you go ahead and make these two practices as part of your daily life, even if it's not regarding the these classes make sure you attend all of your classes and do all of your submissions next thing always remember to do your submission irrespective of how you've done that day whether you've done a good job bad job whatever it is make sure to do your submissions i would love to see whatever you're going ahead and creating whether you have done an excellent job or not an excellent job so very very well done everybody um in the next class like i said is going to be a bunch of uh, elements or subjects together and that's what we're going to be going ahead and targeting and I can't wait to see you in the last class and see the progress you've made with that. Till then, I'm going to say bye-bye and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Have a look at the submission video if you haven't already. Hi everyone, we are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at YOLO. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com you can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you've at last attended, which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on Share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app. I am eagerly looking forward to all your submissions right after the